Good afternoon and welcome to Programmers Paradise and AVG's webinar for Small Business Security. What are the threats and how do I protect my business? Briefly going over today's agenda, um, we're going to go over who we are, Programmers Paradise, and then get into our presentation given by Nicholas and Jim from AVG, Small Business Security, What are the Threats and How Do I Protect My Business? Then we're going to go into a question and answer period. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please type them in the chat and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. And we're going to go into a summary back again. Uh, just to hear the quick slide of who we are at Programmers Paradise, we are a leading e-seller of developer and infrastructure tools. We can be found on the web at www.programmers.com. Um, we are an AVG reseller. We resell their security products, their internet security, and the AVG antiviruses. We offer team development services, such as assessment, deployment, and migration. This is a copy of our ALM worldview and software ecosystem. We offer industry-leading tools for your end-to-end -end development needs. We define, design, develop, test, deploy, and manage all of your needs. And with that, we're gonna turn over the presentation to Nick and Jim from AVG to start with their presentation and their demos. Nick, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, folks. I appreciate you joining us today. Um, give me a moment. I will get myself organized here, and we'll begin. As um, you know, as Danielle uh, mentioned, uh, you know, the, the purpose of today's presentation is really to go over uh, you know, what are the threats? And, and most of us recognize, uh, you know, the type of threat, threats that are out there, uh, but not everyone actually does take the steps necessary to, um, to make sure that we protect our networks. Uh, it's, it's amazing, actually, to know, uh, to actually see um, how many uh, of, um, of today's SMB customers uh, have very little protection at all. And actually, there's a slide coming up uh, that identifies some percentages that, uh, frankly, shock us. And I'm sure it's pretty shocking in general. So we'll talk about why SMB businesses, uh, you know, have become the favorite targets of cyber criminals, uh, the common ways that they gained entry into networks, and then, uh, you know, more importantly, the steps that can be taken to protect uh, against that happening. And, um, you know, towards the tail end of our presentation, we're going to talk about, you know, how uh, we can help, the type of solutions that we offer. And, uh, and Jim Hubka, one of our sales engineers, will, uh, will give you a short um, demo of, uh, of some of the functionality in the console and how that's managed. Now, network security is a fundamental necessity. Um, and that's, uh, that's a fact in today's world. Uh, it sounds obvious. Uh, but surprisingly, the number of small and medium businesses, as I mentioned earlier, that have not taken the proper steps to protect their networks is astounding. I believe the next slide shows some of these uh, stats, and here we are. Um, I mean, it's astounding to think that, uh, you know, 14% of small and medium businesses really have no protection. A lot of them are using free products, uh, you know, things that uh, are downloadable over the web. Um, a quarter of them have been breached already. Uh, over half of them have no policies. Um, and, you know, clear majority say that they need something uh, better uh, to, uh, to help protect their network. Uh, and as we know, most SMB businesses, you know, don't really have a lot of dedicated in-house IT staff. So they really, you know, rely on the technology and any kind of outsource support that they can get. Uh, and clearly, you know, the obvious thing is that uh, the majority of folks want to put their trust in brands that they recognize and know, you know, have been successful at, uh, at what they do. So now, you know, why are small businesses targeted more than others? Well, obviously, there's a financial uh, reason. Uh, also, it's relatively easy to, um, to breach and to... Uh, you know, to get information from small businesses for the reasons that we just saw. Um, and also, it's a low risk. You know, cyber criminals, as we know, uh, are anonymous and they're anywhere and everywhere. And there's really no um, centralized international cyber police 
force to go after them. You know, you commit a crime, generally uh, you pay the consequences. With, with cybercrime, you know, that clearly is not the case. So now this, this slide here shows um, kind of, uh, you know, the evolution of what's out there these days. Uh, you know, core protection has actually evolved from that traditional antivirus uh, to address the increasing variety of online and web threats. As you can see here, there's a, a you know, a wide variety of them. And it's not just viruses, but spam, malicious threats. I mean, malicious threats have been up uh, 300%, uh, you know, uh, from 2009 to 2010. And uh, I'd venture to guess that that number is probably much higher at this point. And the motive for these cyber criminals has actually changed. It used to be that, you know, you'd get um, a virus and it was an irritant, uh, an aggravating thing, you know, something that maybe slowed your business down. Um, but, you know, today, clearly, it's, it's harmful. Uh, things like ID theft, uh, you know, information, stealing information. Uh, that is really what, uh, you know, what we face, not just small businesses, obviously everybody. And to be relevant in today's marketplace, uh, really a solution has to address all these vulnerabilities, uh, you know, in order to keep uh, the business network secure. So what are the common ways that, uh, that you know, these folks actually, uh, you know, penetrate into a network? Um, well, first of all, it's not just cyber criminals that are causing uh, online crime to grow uh, year over year. Uh, we as a society are online uh, much more frequently, and we're doing many more things online than we ever did. I mean, you know, a lot of us uh, do our banking online. Obviously, all of us do messaging. Uh, we have storage. Uh, you know, we have really critical, important files. Uh, so we're, you know, we're that much more vulnerable because of those reasons. And we've also got more internet-connected devices, uh, you know, our smartphones, all the different things that we use um, in our personal lives, but, you know, as importantly, to do our jobs. Uh, and uh, as a result, there's been a, a major shift in the security market in order to respond uh, to all these changes. First and foremost, email and spam. <laughs> Oldies but baddies, but they're still out there. I mean, it's still um, a very popular um, a way to get, uh, you know, to get malicious code into somebody's system. So even though they may not be as effective as they once were, uh, they're certainly becoming more clever uh, as legitimate applications are being hijacked, uh, you know, to, to deliver malicious payloads, et cetera. So this is one thing that continues to be a threat. Another one, and one that's uh, certainly more, uh, more contemporary, is social networking. It's provided yet another opportunity uh, for these attacks. Um, and, and, you know, on top of that, uh, social networking has become an established business practice. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, stats tell us that uh, it's set to overtake email in, you know, a couple of short years. And since only a small percentage of companies have any social media policies in place at all, the risks, uh, you know, obviously continue to grow. Another of the challenges is the increasing uh, mobility of the workforce. Uh, not only that, but the wide range of hardware and devices uh, that make up today's office. Uh, you know, a salesperson, for instance, is, uh, is on the road using, um, you know, a laptop, sometimes their own flash drives, uh, certainly using their own, uh, you know, phones and mobile devices. Uh, so all these things introduce risk, uh, you know, into the, work, into the uh, environment. Speaking of smart uh, uh, smartphone devices, uh, you know, they can introduce and spread malware uh, on the network in the exact same fashion as traditional computer can. So it's important um, to address all these things because now you've got all these points of entry. Another uh, common issue is, uh, is fake free Wi-Fi uh, wi hotspots. You know, I mentioned a moment ago about, uh, you know, the mobile sales force out there um, you know, doing their day-to-day -day jobs. Uh, you know, how many times do we uh, get onto a, a hotspot that, uh, you know, we assume is legitimate? And, you know, these are ways for people to, uh, to uh, steal your information, key loggers, I mean, you name it. That's a, a way for, uh, for your information to be compromised. So um, I probably just summarized, you know, everything uh, that we all know anyway. Uh, it's just good to put it 
down so that we, you know, everything is recognized in terms of, you know, all these vulnerabilities that we face today in today's world. So the important thing here is, you know, what do we do to uh, to create a baseline to protect ourselves so that, you know, uh, along with the technology, uh, we uh, really limit the opportunity for these uh, bad guys to uh, to compromise our network. Well, we've really broken it down into simple three simple steps uh, in order to protect. Uh, one's business, and they're, and they're clearly policy, technology, and process. Um, and this is a strong approach, not just for SMB, but uh, but just for businesses in general. I mean, if we take care of these basic um, fundamentals, uh, you know, the chances of somebody um, actually breaching our network are going to be reduced that much. So let's start off with policy. You know, first off, you need we need to decide as a business. Um, whether the uh, the hardware and software, computers and software, are to be supplied by the company, by the staff, by a mix of both, and then really uh, set policies that reflect these decisions, um, and then create documentation, uh, you know, simple, acceptable use policy, secure your network against unsecured behavior by employees by making it very clear on what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. So that's simply just putting things down and making sure that um, your em your employees are are educated about what is uh, you know what the company policy is. Um, I'm not going to uh, reiterate all these stats, but you could see that um, you know the fact that uh, you know these percentages exist uh, make it that much more uh, imperative that we do take steps to make sure people understand what they can and can't do in the work environment. The second uh, part of policy is password. Uh, it's uh, it's incredible, uh, you know, and, and I've been guilty. Well, I'm sure we've all been guilty uh, throughout our lives about having you know passwords that aren't necessarily very very strong. So uh, as you can see, there's uh, there's some very minimum uh, minimal requirements that you should make um, everyone uh, you know adhere to. As you can hear, see here, you need to mix upper and lower case, uh, mix in alphanumeric characters, uh, and clearly nothing that can be, uh, you know, seen and found in the dictionary. As you, uh, as you probably well know, uh, there are uh, some utilities out there that these, um, you know, these folks with bad intent use to be able to figure out your uh, your password. So it automates it for them. The second part of the policy is um, uh, that's really important is um, is the reporting of breaches. Uh, you need to make sure that your staff is educated on, uh, you know, w when a breach has happened, you know, the type of things that they should be looking out for or really be alerted by, um, and then to report it. However, uh, you know, small and meaningless it may seem, uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, a big network breach issue uh, becomes that way because nobody reported it when it first, uh, you know, started popping up. So let's move on to the, to the technology piece. You know, obviously here again, this is a pretty straightforward. Um, you need to ensure that all your operating systems are up to date. Uh, ensure all computers have security software. Uh, you know, install the latest um, patches. Uh, make sure everything is uh, is up to the latest uh, definitions, uh, patches, et cetera, so that um, you're not giving uh, anyone with, that's trying to get into your network, you know, an easy uh, an easier road into it. Um, the other piece of it is is firewall protection. So it is, you know, it's not only important to have end, endpoint protection on all machines, uh, but to have a firewall that uh, gives you a first line of defense. Uh, file storage, email protection. Uh, these are another uh, another couple of things that um, need to uh, you know, you need to ensure that they are protected. Uh, bottom line: be certain to be immune from threats looming online, but making sure that you have all the latest uh, information and that every point uh, of entry into your network uh, is protected. The third part is process, and process, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about it a moment ago, making sure that your your staff understands what's expected of them. Um, uh, you know, basically, uh, first and foremost, understanding basic 
IT knowledge, um, online security training for all your staff, uh, ensure that backs, backups are made uh, on a consistent uh, basis, uh, making sure that passwords are changed regularly, um, you know, making sure that staff understand and take security breaches seriously, um, you, you know, recover uh, reputation, equipment, and lost data. All these are all things that uh, can lead to uh, you know a very damaging situation. And it affects all businesses, sole traders, government, corporations. It doesn't really matter what you do. If you're online, you have a network, and you have vulnerabilities. Um, you know, unless you adhere to these things, you're uh, going to become vulnerable. So that's the. Um, you know, the overview on, you know, why SMBs are targeted, how they're targeted, and what should be done as a baseline uh, to, to ensure that, you know, you're, you, you've got the minimals taken care of. Uh, the other thing uh, that's important here is, well, okay, so we've done all that. Now you have a choice of security, um, you know, partners that you can look to to, uh, to help you, uh, you know, protect your network. So why AVG, and how can we help? Well, we've got um, a number of business products to uh, you know to help your uh, to help you secure your network. Uh, but ultimately, we you know we all understand that there's many many uh, security companies out uh, in the landscape right now. Uh, so what makes us different? And the thing that makes us different, really, there's three points, and you can see them on on the screen right now. We're extremely high. Award, we have award-winning technology uh, that does what you buy it to do. It helps prevent and detect. Uh, essentially, keep your network um, protected from from threats. The second thing, uh, and this is, uh, you know, it may not be the most important, but certainly it's an important piece to it, is what kind of resource train whatever product you're using to protect your network uh, has on the overall performance of that network. And we have historically uh, had a very, very small footprint. And the reason for that is um, if you look at the majority of our customers, uh, they are smack dab right in the SMB marketplace. You know, we have never really been an enterprise customer, uh, I'm sorry, an enterprise vendor. Although our products do scale, and we certainly have uh, you know customers that uh, in the tens of thousands of users, the majority of our customers, I would say, are between 25 users and 5,000. You know, the majority of them are right smack in the middle of somewhere there. And so it's important that we're not hogging uh, an undue amount of resources on their network as uh, as we're trying to protect it. That way, we're not slowing them down. We're not creating heartburn for them as they try and do their business. And thirdly, you know, and this goes hand in hand with the other things, is that we're a relatively easy uh, product to use. Um, you know, Jim uh, is going to get, pro provide a demo in a few moments, um, and he's going to show you some of the specifics around the, the remote management console and how to use it and what it does. Uh, and you'll notice that um, you, whether you have any experience with AVG uh, beforehand or not, it's a product that allows you to do well, many, many things. It's extremely configurable, you know, very granular in what you could do to, with it. Uh, but on the other hand, it's uh, it's pretty intuitive and easy to use. So those are the important points um, that I wanted to mention. This is one of our products, uh, Internet Security Business Edition. Um, we have several point solutions, uh, but this one is the most comprehensive one. This protects all your PCs. It also protects file server uh, all file servers and the email server on the network. And as you can see, there's a lot of um, functionality available in the product. Of course, antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-rootkit, anti-malware. There's a desktop firewall component, um, anti-spam client. Um, and you can see, you know, the rest of them. One, some of the important things to note are that, um, you know, we have some really um, – Strong web protection through our uh, functionality called Link Scanner. It's in the middle of the, you know that long list of functionality up there, and Jim can talk a, bit, a little bit about it uh, in more detail later. But essentially, that's uh, the component in our product that really does an, uh, an amazing job at keeping your uh, you protected from web threats. And uh, and let's face it, the web is still uh, you know the uh, the place that where a preponderance of threats originate anyway.
So what do you get from ABG uh, when you're looking at solutions? You get, you know, as I mentioned, world-class security products. Um, one of the things that we've been doing over the last six months is, uh, you know, when folks do decide um, to, to purchase our product, uh, you know, obviously, you know, with what we do day to day, we are replacing some other vendor, uh, you know, on a daily basis, times, uh, you know, who knows how many times a day, right? So we have become uh, not only experts at deploying our own product, but we've become an expert, experts at helping you uh, with taking off whatever product is on your network right now. I know that, um, you know, one of the things that really uh, concerns folks is, uh, you know, I may not be happy with what I'm using. It may not be the most manageable, easy product, or, you know, it's letting in some malware, but gosh, there's a lot of work involved with getting uh, you know, what I use off my network and deploying something else. Well, you know what? We'll do that with you. Uh, it's uh, free of charge. It's part of the product purchase, and we'll be there to help you remove and deploy. The other thing that we're offering is free home use licenses. So when you do purchase our product, um, you'll be able to get um, an equal number of home use licenses so that your, uh, you know, your staff is, uh, is able to protect their, their personal PCs at home with AVG. And finally, in terms of pricing, uh, you know, uh, obviously I go back to what I mentioned about how competitive everything is. Uh, all of our pricing is really built on competitive upgrade um, basis. Uh, you know, we know that you have a renewal of whatever you're using. There's a budget that you've already set aside. Uh, we um, have set our price list uh, in a way that, uh, that we're within your budget for a renewal. So we're extremely price competitive. This um, slide here uh, shows you um, a view of our uh, AVG uh, Business Resource Center. Um, as you could probably see, there, there's many tabs of um, not only guides that help you, um, you know, with uh, uh, just knowledge about securing your environment. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the presentation that we went through just now uh, is a result of, uh, you know, one of these documents or a combination of a couple of these documents on there. But, you know, you can look at this at your leisure and, um, you know, and, and, and get some more information uh, and some guidance through that. There's pre-recorded videos, uh, overviews of our product. Uh, there's tutorials. Um, there's a, you know, a download tab where you can download trial versions of our product. And as you can see, there's product information and case studies. So it's a wealth of information for you to be able to, uh, to learn more about AVG and what AVG has to offer um, in terms of just knowledge, let alone just products. Well, that um, pretty much wraps it up for me. But what I wanted to, uh, to reiterate is that if you do have any uh, any questions, you know, please feel free to send them along. Uh, we'll, we'll be glad to uh, to answer them. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Jim Hubka. Jim Hubka is one of our team of sales engineers, um, and uh, and he'll be able to do a, a product demo for you. Uh, it's going to be, um, you know, a shorter version of what we normally would do on a regular basis to uh, uh, to f for folks, but he's going to be able to give you a, a pretty good overview of the console. So thank you again, and uh, and Jim, it's all yours. Oh, thank you very much. Great job, Nick. Um, so I hope everyone can see my, my desktop. This is the AVG admin console. Now, uh, some of you may know AVG from the free product or the consumer product, but uh, as Nick had mentioned, we also have a product for, uh, for, for SMBs, for, for small businesses as well. And this is the, the admin console. This is the management piece. Yeah, that you don't get when you have the free product or the uh, the consumer product, and this allows you to uh, to monitor, to create uh, groups that will create policies for each group. Uh, you can do just about anything uh, from the admin console here that you could do if you were at the workstation itself. So if we go in here and uh, just right click, as you can see, we can do uh, program and product updates. We can, uh, we can launch scans or manage scans. We can check the virus vault. So again, this is a very lightweight uh, management console. If we go into the tools menu here, I'll just show you real quick that uh, this is an all-inclusive product. It comes with the Firebird database uh, for the back-end users. We also have 
uh, support for Microsoft uh, SQL Server, SQL Server Express, MySQL, and Oracle 10G and 11G for larger enterprise deals. Uh, now, of course, uh, the Fiber database comes embedded with the admin console. You don't need a dedicated server to install this on. You can actually install this on an XP box or a Windows 7 box. And it has its own its own web service, so uh, you don't need IIS or or Apache or a third party web server. Uh, it's all inclusive uh, again, and um, and you can install it just about anywhere. Now, what I'd like to show you first is just some of the just some of the configuration options that we have, and of course, we take a layered approach to security. Uh, we've got several different options, including including the on access scan. For that, we use the resident shield. Now, uh, Nick had mentioned that there are a few ways that you can get, uh, you know, uh, code on your PCs that will will compromise your work PCs and your network. One of the ways would be from an external drive, such as a thumb drive. People will do work from home. They save it to a uh, thumb drive. That thumb thumb drive has an infection on it or or some malicious code. Uh, but when they have AVG on their work computer, as soon as they as soon as they insert that thumb drive into the USB port, AVG is going to scan the boot sector of that port to make sure that there are no uh, that there are no rootkits or worms or, or trojans that are going to infiltrate your network. Now, along with the on-access scanner, we also do on-demand scanning, where you right-click on a file or a folder and, and say you scan with AVG. And then, of course, we've got schedule scans. And uh, in 2011, we've implemented what's called smart scanning. Now, one of the things uh, with smart scanning, I'll go into the how to scan tab, we have the ability to enable thorough scanning. And what this does is it will scan for older viruses and older malware that have since been made obsolete by the uh, operating system security patches or the web browser security patches. So if you have older versions of the operating system or of your browser, uh, like XP Service Pack 1 or Service Pack 2, for instance, that aren't updated to the latest patches, you can enable thorough scanning. And again, it will scan for those older viruses that have been made obsolete by those, by those patches. So um, for the most part, you probably won't need it because in, in a business environment, you should be uh, you know, up to the, the latest uh, rev of security patches, but if not, then we uh, we uh, do have the ability to scan for those uh, for those older viruses. Now, another component to smart scanning, as you can see here, we have the uh, this is the scanning process priority slide bar. So what this does is it sets the process priority. If you go into Task Manager here under the process, as you can see, each process has a priority. By default, it's set to normal. Now we can set it to high, which will run a faster scan and take up more take up more resources, or we can set it to low, which will take up less resources, but it will take longer for the scan to complete. Now we've added what's called the user sensitive option. What this does is it determines if there's any activity on the computer during the scanning process, and if uh, if there isn't, then what it will do is it'll set that process to high, so it will run faster. Um, and again, it will uh, will complete faster uh, if there is activity. So if uh, if if someone logs in during the scan, it will also detect that, and it will it will throttle that process priority back down to below normal. So that way, the users won't see any performance degradation. So, and these are just a couple of a uh, couple of things that we have, and of course, uh, most of our competitors have this as well. But again, we do have the thorough scanning and, and that slide bar with the user sensitive option. Now, going on with the with the uh, the layered protection, there uh, uh, a second way to get uh, to get infections in your uh, environment would be through email. Now, uh, for the most part, people people are wise to uh, to these email scams. They're not going to. Uh, you know, they know they probably didn't win the lottery in Zimbabwe, so they, they probably won't answer to that email. However, you still do get you get attachments from uh, like a UPS email or DHL 
Uh, those have been going around. So we do scan for attachments to make sure that they're uh, not going to be infecting your computer if they're opened up. Now, in the third biggest way we're going to get uh, an infection in your in your uh, environment would be from the internet. Now, we uh, have a few components that again we have we have layers. We have a few components that will protect you from anomalies that uh, that may come from the internet. We have Online Shield, which works with your browser, and it scans any port that uh, that uh, an application attempts to use to transfer files. So, for instance, um, if you're not using a uh, you know a, um, a known port, if you're going to be using an FTP port, for instance, through your browser, we will we will scan port 21 to make sure that that there are no uh, no files that are going to come through that port and infect your computer. We have the the ability to check archives, and, and, and those are files such as zip files or CAB files or RAR files. So. Uh, also, we've got the thorough scanning option. So, um, if you do have an older version of your your browser, it will check for older viruses. Now, we also protect against some instant messaging applications such as ICQ, MSN, and Yahoo. We can whitelist or blacklist account IDs or email addresses. Uh, we also, uh, if there's any transfers going over this uh, instant messaging application, we will also uh, scan for any uh, any files that may be uh, malicious as well. Now, Link Scanner, this uh, <coughs> excuse me, in 2007, ABG had purchased or acquired a company uh, called Exploit Prevention Labs down in Georgia, and they had the Link Scanner component. And with that, and with that Link Scanner technology, there's there's two components. We have the Search Shield and the Surf Shield. And let me. Uh, Actually, let me bring up a browser and show you this in real time and kind of show you how this works. Let me bring this over here for you. There we go. So, so if we go in here and we do a search in Bing for where's, as you can see, it brings back the results. And with the results, we'll also bring back uh, an icon to let you know or the end user know if these sites are safe or not. Now, ABG's Link Scanner is the only, uh, you know, this technology is the only technology that does this in real time. We do have a local database that stores information, um, you know, about the most common searches, but we also, um, when you do a search and you have this enabled within your browser, it will go to the ABG cloud servers. And again, it will, it will show this in real time. So you don't have to wait uh, for another update to, from, uh, from any of our competitors if you're using their technology. Again, this is done in real time, so your end users will know if a site is risky or not. And again, that's the search shield. We also have the surf shield. And for that, we will go to uh, icar.org, and, and in here there's an anti-malware test file. Now, as you can see here, there's a string of text that, that all antivirus vendors can detect. So if we click on any of these files, uh, we'll do icar.com, for instance. As you can see, as soon as you click on it, and it tries to download that file that's infected, SurfShield will block that. As you can see here, it gives you the URL and the name of the virus. Now, actually, on my other on my my other monitor, we've got the online shield. That's also blocking that. So right there is two layers of protection. And again, for a zip file, for a file within a file. And let's open this up. And again, if the only way that you can stop this, to prevent this uh, from coming up, is to basically disable it. This will not allow you to dis to uh, to download any files if it's enabled. So, uh, and that's another thing that uh, that AVG that uh, does that our co competitors don't do. So, getting back into the admin console. 
We also have, um, you know, this is also great for uh, for social networking sites. I know a lot of uh, businesses these days do advertising on on uh, social uh, networking sites such as Facebook. So if someone is to post a link that will either take you to a, uh, a malicious site or try to download uh, code that might be malicious, then Facebook will prevent that from happening. So it will stop it before it gets on your computer. Now, these are these are great. You know, we've got right there. We've got four or five different uh, layers, but we also have the identity protection uh, component. Now, what this is, this is the heuristics engine. So if uh, uh, a lot of these exploit kits, uh, if you know, they had these uh, these Windows uh, scanning um, uh, viruses. So you, you go to a website, and it looks like it's scanning your PC, but actually it's infecting your PC. And it says, okay, you've got, uh, you know, such and such an application, you know, antivirus 2010 or 2011 has detected. You have X amount of issues with your computer. Download this file. Well, that's an exploit kit. And the virus writers, they they... Uh, keep updating these files so they go under the radar of the virus database files. So by having this heuristics, en heurist heuristics engine that doesn't rely on uh, virus database signatures or, uh, or, or scans, it, uh, it will detect these anomalies based upon the, <coughs> excuse me, the payload or the behavior of a file. So Again, it will uh, if it does uh, if a file does something uh, or an application does something like write to the system 32 directory or to the registry and then also uh, log keystrokes. If you have a man in the middle attack, for instance, and you go to a banking application and then that application, as soon as it knows you're at you know bankofamerica.com, it's going to wake up and start logging your keystrokes and grabbing your uh, your information for your, your bank and for your credit card, now IDP will detect this. And in here is how you can uh, uh, display it to your end users if you want uh, IDP to always prompt the end users if it detects something or to automatically quarantine detected or known threats. So again, we've got many layers of protection that will protect your end users uh, against these types of threats. Now we also have what's called the alert manager. So if you do a deployment out to you know 500 of your desktops, as you can see here, there's a list of events that you can choose from. So for instance, if there's a virus vault object added on any of those PCs, or if there's a threat found, or if identity protection detects malware, you can configure this interface here to have an email sent to a specific person or to an IT alias. We have some customers that uh, have it, uh, send SMS messages to cell phones. So that way, as soon as any of these events occur on any of the endpoints that you have AVG installed on, you will be notified. You can either send an email, you can record an NT uh, uh, event log. So if you have a, a management application such as uh, SolarWind or or Splunk that scrapes these NT event logs, then you can have it right there as well. You can also send this data to the ABG data center, and it will show up in the data center as events. So you can um, you can look in there to see if there are any threats found as well. So we're very proactive in uh, in, in being able to to detect these and, and letting the the right people know. Now, if we go into if we go into the uh, the admin console here again, you can do just about anything here on the admin console that you could do if you were sitting at the desktop. For instance, if uh, a threat is, de is detected and you get an email, um, it'll tell you the station name, it'll tell you the threat, and it'll even tell you the user on the station. So you'll be able to go in and show that virus wall and take the appropriate action. Now, also, the deployment of AVG is very simple as well. If you go into the tools menu, 
you want to choose the Run AVG Network Installer Wizard. And this gives you a couple of ways to deploy to your endpoints. You can either do a remote network installation, which is a push install from the admin console down to the endpoint, or you can create an AVG install script. And what that does is uh, it allows you to write to a CD or to a thumb drive or put it up on a shared drive so you can either run it as a login script or uh, uh, if you have a GPO that you wanted to, to add this to as well. You can also edit this script, and, and this is what we do. If you wanted to remove your current antivirus, what we do is put uh, either call a file that will remove that virus from the script, or we, um, we put a command line in into the batch file that we create that will, that will uh, run the MSI on installer on that as well. And what we'll do is, is just uh, select the network installation and the advanced mode. Now, advanced mode will allow you to pick and choose which components you want to install. The only things you need to be able to do from the admin console down to the endpoints is ping, um, ping the endpoint. You need to make sure that the file and printer sharing are enabled as well as remote procedure call. Also, TCP port 6150 needs to be available because that's where we communicate uh, with the AVG agent service that we deploy during the, uh, uh, you know, during that process. As you can see here, the license key is automatically populated into this into this uh, license number field here. And all we would need to do is just point to where the client files are and click Next. At this point, what it does is it goes and checks to, uh, to make sure that that license key is valid. And it will also check to see if there are any uh, newer executable files on the AVG website. And if there are, it will bring up a dialog box asking you if you want to download them, which is, uh, is very useful because uh, you, we will push out packages maybe once or twice a month. And um, as you can see, uh, we have a new package that was just downloaded the other day. So I can choose yes here to, to download that. Uh, for time's sake, I'm, I'm going to say no. Um, but we want to make sure that you do download and, and deploy the latest package. That way, after the installation is complete and AVG does an update on the endpoints, the updates will run, you know, it won't update larger files, it will update the smaller files if there are any since the, uh, uh, since the executable was uh, created. What, now, uh, what it's doing now is it's retrieving a component list so we'll be able to pick and choose which components we install. Now we also have 32 and 64-bit installation files that we want to download and put in the same directory because the AVG installer will, will pull the client machine to, and determine whether that processor is 32 or 64-bit and it will install the correct executable. Now in here, again, you can pick and choose which components you wish to install. So for instance, we want to uh, install the email scanner, but we don't want to install the plugin for the bat. So if you want to install it, we put a check next to it. If we don't want to install it, we put an X next to it. By leaving it blank, it will install the component, but use the default installer setting. So rule of thumb, a, a check if you want to install it, an X if you do not. Uh, same with the additional languages. We also have a firewall that you may wish to install if you have, uh, if you have users that travel um, and we can create different profiles. And here we've got three types of installations we can do. We can do hidden, we can show the install progress, or we can show the install wizard. So the end user will, will have to uh, click through that. So in a, in a network uh, business environment, we usually choose the hidden installation. That way it's seamless to the end users. And as you can see here, it's going to point back to this admin console uh, over port 4158 so you can, um, you know, that you, you can manage the console right from, I'm sorry, you can manage the endpoint right here from uh, the admin console. You can also choose which group you want to deploy it to. So if you do have uh, several different groups, then you can uh, pick and choose which group that you're going to deploy. We also have custom update server. If you do a light installation of the AVG, uh, the AVG admin console, you can install just the update proxy. So if you have 
um, remote locations or remote offices. Uh, so if your head office is in Chicago and you have offices in Orlando and in San Francisco, you can have an update proxy at each one of those sites but still report back to the Chicago office so uh, you can manage them through there. So we'll click next at this point. Uh, the ABG agent, um, that again, that's what we use over port 6150 and that, that works with the installation wizard to, uh, to copy down the executable files. And here's where we can pick and choose how we want to deploy, whether we want to choose stations from Active Directory, select a single station by uh, host name or IP address. We can import stations from a host file uh, or enter an IP range or just uh, all stations on the domain. So we'll just go and select from Active Directory. It'll bring up your Active Directory interface and you can pick and choose or which station you want to deploy to. I'm going to select all the stations or not. Here we go. We hit the right keyboard, <laughs> and then, as you see here, they'll import it right into the uh, into the installation wizard. Now, one thing, uh, as you can see, it does detect the uh, the station and the IP address. Uh, a lot of customers will see it's unable to detect. Uh, it's unable to detect AVG, so um, not not the uh, computer itself. So um, what we can do is uh, choose which computer you want to install it to, and then click on install, and then away you go. So again, um, we do have several you know uh, several ways to protect your your endpoints, you know, from from email, from external drives as well as from the internet and again the internet is a uh, is a big way that that you will you know find yourself getting infections so with that said i'm going to uh i'm going to send it back to nick and um and if anyone has uh any questions uh please feel free to uh to chat or or, or ask thank you very much jim uh Appreciate the uh, the demo and overview, uh, and hopefully that helped. Um, you know, with uh, at least a visual of seeing how the, you know how the product functions and uh, and how it's uh, it's managed. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was that um, we do, of course, have trial downloads of our product um, that um, that you can get to, you know through Programmers Paradise. Uh, they're able to supply you with. Uh, with a trial download link so that you can take a look and evaluate our product, uh, our product um, you know, at your leisure. But we also um, have scheduled demos. Uh, if you wanted, you know, uh, a, a more, uh, you know, drilled down whole hour version of, uh, of this overview where, you know, we touch on, uh, you know, a lot more of the, uh, of the components, um, you can get that from programmers as well. They happen regularly every Tuesday and Thursday, um, you know, every single week. So, uh, so that schedule uh, and the links to be able to to, uh, to register for those are, are um, accessible to you through through our friends at programmers. Um, and, you know, right now uh, I think we're running up against the clock. So uh, I'll ask if uh, if there's any questions that uh, that you'd like us to address right now. Thanks, Nick. Um, we actually do have a couple questions. Um, the first one is, is support included in the purchase? Um, yes, actually, that's a very good question. Uh, support is definitely included in the purchase. Um, you know, we have uh, support that's accessible via telephone and email, um, and, uh, and it's not extra. It's part of the purchase price. So absolutely, yes. Okay. And is the remote management console sold separately? I uh, know the remote management console, and Jim may have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the product is all inclusive. So uh, the endpoint protection, the management console, uh, you know, and as Jim mentioned, you know, if you have under 200 or 150 users, um, you know, there's no requirement for an external database because it comes with a Firebase. Uh, database built into it. Uh, also, no need for uh, you know for Apache server or any kind of other web server. So that's a long way of saying that it's not separate. It's all part of the purchase. Okay. 
And you can actually have, uh, again, different update proxies uh, at each remote location and report into one central admin console, and that comes with the business products. The, uh, the admin console is basically free with, uh, with that purchase. Okay, and the last one, if anybody else has any more questions, please feel free to enter them in through the chat or the Q&A, um, is does AVG support virtual environments? Uh, yes, actually we do. I, I'm on a virtual environment right now. Um, I have a, uh, uh, as you can see, a small active directory network. And uh, yes, we, we do support virtual environments. It's just like if you were to install AVG on a regular PC, you would install it on that on the uh, the, the image on your either your ESX box or if you have uh, uh, you know Hyper-V or whatever the case may be, we uh, we do support that. Okay, um, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. Um, but if anybody else does have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at info at programmers.com and we'll be sure to have somebody get back to you with the answer. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending the, um, the webinar today. Thanks so much, Jim and Nick, for participating. If you would like, contact us at www.programmers.com or if you're in Canada, www.programmersparadise.ca. Um, thanks again for attending, and we look forward to the next webinar. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.